So St. Lucia has got to be one of my most favorite places I've ever traveled to. It's not only incredibly beautiful, the people amazing, the food great, but it's also extremely diverse with a huge variety of fun activities that you can do. In this video, I want to share with you the 12 top most important things that you guys need to include in your itinerary. Take a shot on three, we'll cry a symphony Till the hurt runs free Don't need no sympathy, no apologies You can confide in me Starting with number one, and that is hiking the most iconic thing here in St. Lucia, and that is Gros Piton, which is the second highest mountain here in St. Lucia. It's a government-run trail, and the duration will be around four hours, a really quite challenging hike. I wouldn't suggest it for people that aren't necessarily agile or fit. En route, you'll be taken through one of the biggest cocoa plantations in St. Lucia, and the tour to the top will cost around 50 US dollars and you'll be joined by a very experienced hiker one of the guides if you really love hiking and you want a more challenging hike you can also hike the tallest mountain here which is known as Mount Jimmy and also Petit Piton which is the second Piton of the two Pitons but these are privately run and not government run so if you do want to go ahead and do that speak to the hikers at the Gros Piton hike and they will be able to direct you to the right place now if the Gros Piton hike is a little bit out of your depth and you don't want to do it, you can hike the Tet Paul Trail, which is only a 40 minute hike. It's nowhere near as challenging and it potentially offers even better views than the Gros Piton hike. My tip for doing these hikes would be bringing hard shoes, so hiking boots, not necessarily running trainers because you might stub your toes, wearing insect repellent and also bringing lots of sun cream because you will be sweating lots and it will probably soak off. And with that being said, also make sure you bring enough water. Second on the list is doing a walking tour of the capital Castries. Personally, I feel it's a great way to start your trip. I love how the St. Lucians are so, so friendly. They're just going about their business, going about their days. They're all really happy and they're all incredibly friendly. On this tour, after visiting the main sites like the Basilica, which is why Castries is now the capital, we then head over to the food market and tried some coconuts, right, that were sliced open by a machete because that's just how they do it here in St. Lucia. Trying some fruits such as papaya, guava, some soursop, tamarind. And finally, we finished this walking tour with some souvenir shopping in the Castries Market, which is the main souvenir shopping place on the island. Next on the list is an absolute essential, bean to bar chocolate making experience. St. Lucia is very, very famous for its chocolate making. On this tour, we did the cedary experience and then after bean to bar making experience. And the cedary experience basically starts with you learning about the cocoa pods, the beans, the process, the seeds that are involved. A really fun part of this tour was actually doing the grafting yourself because on the tour, you're able to take the graft and name your own plant and you can basically call up anytime, send emails, and check up the progress of how your plant is growing. But after doing the plantation tour and walking around and seeing the actual pods on the trees, the highlight has got to be the bean to bar making experience. You have the ingredients which are grown on site, completely organic, no pesticides or anything. You see the pods, right? You see the cocoa butter, which is from the pods, the sugar, the nicks of the you know, the actual cocoa itself, you get to taste it. It tastes bitter, but it's delicious as well. And you get to crush all those ingredients together and make your own melted chocolate. Once mixing all those ingredients together, you then get to pour it in your own little mold and leave with your own chocolate bar that you have made. That for me was absolutely mind boggling. Again, guys, the link to book this will be in the video description. Next up, book a private tour around the island. Personally, I would suggest 
booking this very early on in your trip because the benefit of doing so is you will reach a lot of the main sites, a lot of the landmarks and a lot of the top places that you need to see on the island in the most efficient and effective time possible. Now it is really important that the tour company that you book with is reliable because there will be a lot of local excursions on the island that potentially will be run by people that aren't certified and don't have the qualification in tourism. So with this being said, I joined one of the top rated tour companies on the entire island. The tour guide was known as Danny Boy and he was honestly incredible, one of the highlights of the trip. He was an encyclopedia, he literally knew everything and it was really engaging the tour because throughout the tour he would quiz you so he would test that you're actually retaining the information and if you had any questions he was really reliable in answering them. Now the link to book Danny Boy will be in the video description, I can highly highly recommend it. My next top thing to do is do a food tour. Trying the local cuisine is one of the most essential things to get a really good feel for the culture and the nation that you're in. And St. Lucia is no exception to that because the cuisine here is unique to all the other Caribbean islands. Creole isn't necessarily just a cuisine, it's a style of living, it's a tradition using the specific utensils like cooking in Creole pots, but the food is delicious. Personally, for this, I joined the other tour which is a tour company run by Delvin and he was incredibly knowledgeable and a phenomenal tour guide. By joining Delvin and his tours, we were eating at some of the most local places that no tourist would ever end up going to. For breakfast, we tasted a Creole breakfast, which was completely traditional, eating their national dish, which is the salted codfish. We tried yams, we tried the green bananas, we tried sweet potatoes, and the food is so, so delicious. Now, the great thing about this food tour is it actually includes the rum distillery as part of your tour. So you'll be seeing how rum's made, you'll be visiting the different areas where the rums are distilled and you'll be able to try all the different rums that the island produces. You can just drink as much of the rum as you please from the most expensive, the Admiral Rodney, to the most common which is the Bounty Rum which in my opinion is my favourite. So we tried Cocoa Tea which is made from 100% chocolate, so so delicious. Now, now for me, the highlight of this tour was visiting the Grand Eden Estate. This was a farm which was so, so beautiful. Taking guavas, papayas off the trees and just eating them fresh. We also saw some peanut plants where we picked the peanuts off the plants and ate them out of the pods. We roasted our own cashew nuts and then just ate them. I can highly, highly suggest this food tour. The link to do so will be in the description. Let's go! go. Woo! Next up, number six on that list, Rainforest Adventures. We did the Tranopy tour, which included a 35 minute aerial tram ride through the rainforest, giving us a bird's eye view almost of the rainforest, which was so relaxing. We could hear the birds chirping. It was coupled with some bird watching as well. We saw some hummingbirds and some really unique plantation. And then when we got to the end of the aerial tram, which by the way, gave us some amazing photo opportunities, we did a short hike to the start of the zip lines. And guys, the zip lines were so much fun. Nick actually has a fear of heights and he was absolutely fine with it. We, we felt so secure. The tour guides were really professional, really experienced and made us feel very, very safe. Link to do so will be in the video description. Next up, Sea Spray Cruises. It started with a catamaran that we were picked up at Rodney Bay Marina and we were greeted at 9am with a rum punch. And of course, as you can imagine, a lot of people got carried away with these rum punches. People started dancing, people were getting up, like it was good vibes all around. But then we stopped off at Soufrié, which was the old capital of St. Lucia before Castries was the capital. And then we were picked up by some shuttle buses. At that point, we were given two options, whether or not we wanted to do the historical volcano tour, or we picked the latter to go to the Sulphur Springs mud baths, which were incredibly fun. Top tip though, make sure you bring a pair of black swim shorts that you don't mind getting ruined and also a towel because they don't provide towels and you're gonna wanna, of course, wash off. After which we then went to Toriel Waterfall. I think I said that correctly, which was beautiful. Great photo opportunity. And you know, one of the top things that you need to do here, which was fun. And then we made a stop off at Morn Corbaril Estate, which was where we had a Creole buffet lunch. We 
got back into the minibuses and were taken back to the catamaran at Soufrié, where we got back on it and were greeted with some more rum punch. The DJ was sick, the music was great, people were dancing, people of all ages were up, like talking to one another. It was just such an amazing experience. But that's not where it ends, because this was ultimately a snorkeling trip. So they took us to Arns Conchon, which is the Pig Bay, I think it's called. We stopped here to do some snorkeling, which was really, really fun. After which we then took a trip to Marigot Bay, which is that iconic bay. Now this journey was about an hour and a half back, an hour back, and it was just so much fun. You've got to do this one. Sea Spray Cruises, link to book it, will be in the video description. Next on the list, do a Segway tour. It was more of a history tour. We did learn about how, you know, Rodney Bay was named after Admiral Rodney when he won the Battle of Saints, I believe it was in the 1700s. The French and the English constantly battling it out to try and take ownership of St. Lucia. But we were visiting more of the sites that were relevant in the Second World War. A lot of what Admiral Rodney did build was utilized by the Americans in the Second World War. Yeah, again, it was a history tour and you're learning a lot about St. Lucia, but it was just so much fun to be off-road, to be on a Segway. It was just sick. Segway tour, a lot of fun, and I can highly recommend it. Link to book it will be in the video description. Next up, number nine, Splash Island. Guys, this was so, so much fun. It's a play area on the sea. It was incredible. If you're a kid, you're gonna love it. If you're a grown up, you're also gonna love it. Spend an hour there. Definitely add Splash Island to your list of things to do. Number 10, we have got doing a horse ride with Sandy Hooves. I am not experienced in horse riding, but doing this tour with Sandy Hooves, you're made to feel so welcome, so safe, because the riders and the trainers are extremely experienced. You'll also be given the opportunity to canter, to trot, to gallop even, if you want. But the best part about this is it's just so unique, you know, being able to get on a horse in the Caribbean and walk along the beach. It was such a unique experience and one that I will never forget. We had a short picnic, we had some Prosecco, and it was just lovely to just chill and break up. Do a horse riding tour with Sandy Hooves. You'll have an amazing, amazing time. Number 11 of the top things to do. This is the Gros Ile Fish Friday Fish Party. The locals, the youngsters, all gathering together, cooking food, dancing, good vibes all around. If you're with families and with young children, it might be not the best place to go late at night. Very, very loud music. Very, very crowded as well. I'd probably suggest getting there for around six or seven, just to enjoy the good food, enjoy the good vibes. My top tip for food would be go to Duke's. Keep walking all the way to the end and you will see the big smoke and a massive queue. Last but not least, in no particular order, it is eating at some of the best restaurants. Big Chef Steakhouse, and Orlando's. Big Chef offers the best steaks on the island, in my opinion. I just had an amazing night there. And Orlando's, now Orlando is probably one of the most famous chefs in the Hall of the Caribbean. He's regularly voted as one of the top chefs here, and he made his name when he was the executive chef at one of the top hotels on the island, the Ladera Resort. And he has basically gone and created his own restaurant where there is no menu. You you go there and you get a five course, so every day he uses completely fresh ingredients that are all local and all prepared on the day. So every time that you go, you'll get a completely unique experience from eating there. And there you guys have it. That is 12 of the top things that you can do here in St. Lucia. So if you were to go ahead and book all 12 of these activities, you would not be visiting the same place twice, but you would be covering everything that you need to do on St. Lucia. So guys, again, if you wanna book any of these tours, use the links in the video description. If this video has been in some way helpful, please hit the like button. It really helps my channel. And if you wanna see more from me because I post weekly videos just like this one, hit that subscribe button and also press the bell notification so you get notified every time a new video gets posted. And also, if you wanna see more from the St. Lucia series, such as in-depth videos of my daily activities, click on this playlist right here because there's so many more videos from St. Lucia. I'll see you guys in the next one. Whew.